Okay, and we're recording. And once again, thank each and every one of you for joining us today. My name is Russell Gray. I am the Vendor Relations Coordinator with the Army CA program uh, with us today, or they may not be on the line, but introduce you to the entire team as well. You have our boss, Mr. Steve Clare, our program manager, Mrs. Sophia Sweeney, Dottie Heffelfinger, Kristen Clark, John Crabtree, and with us today from SOLID, uh, we have Miss Christine Loving. So on behalf of the Army CA program, we want to say thank each and every one of you for joining us today. We hope you get a lot of great information out of this. And at the end, you'll turn around and join us as vendors to be a part of the Army CA program. Our brief overview, we're going to go over knowing the differences between the different programs, the invite email that you may or may not have received. If not, we can happily send it back out to you. Going over the memorandum of agreement, finding your credentials on Army Cool, creating an account, creating an application, the certificate of completion template, credentialing management tab, keeping up with the application, and our PM update. Uh, just so each and every one of you know, if you have a question during any time, feel free to type it into the chat box or just raise your hand up and someone will let me know that I need to stop and pause for a question. We also have a Q&A session at the end if you want to hold your questions to them, but if not, you're more than welcome to go ahead and ask your questions. So knowing the difference, many of you may have heard others reference this as, oh yeah, I'm a part of the Army Cool program, and that's not exactly correct. So the Army Cool website is the repository for all of the credentials that have been approved for soldiers to pursue. Uh, this is something that not only soldiers, but educational institutions are are credentialing bodies, our outside business partners, everyone has access to this website to be able to look and see what credentials that are currently approved on the Army Cool website, as well as how they tie to the training that our soldiers are currently receiving. Think of it like a library, and all of the credentials are the books within the library. There's over 15,000 of them sitting in there, oh, excuse me, 1,500 of them sitting in there already and that our soldiers can look through and can pursue. So then you have the credentialing assistance program itself, or Army CA, as you'll hear us refer to it as. This is the program where soldiers, once they found that credential and they're ready to have the program funded, they would go into the Army credentialing side of the house, and that's where they can do their funding requests. This is also where you, as a vendor, this is what you are a part of. So when you're referencing it, it's not the Army Cool program that you're a part of, but you are actually a part of the Army Credentialing Assistance Program. And again, this is where the soldiers will go in. They'll do their funding request. You'll be able to see the uh, soldiers' request once it's moved to finance under your credentialing management tab under your profile. This is where you'll update your information, you'll create your application, and you'll do your day-to-day -day business with the Army CA program. The bottom one here is Army Ignited. That is actually the system that we're all working out of. So when the soldier makes that CA request, they're going to make that CA request in Army Ignited. Same thing for you as a vendor when you're uh, reviewing those requests or you're reviewing uh, what soldiers have been approved to be able to take your your training or sit with you for an exam. Uh, all of that is done right on the Army Ignited site itself. So again, the difference between the three, Army Cool, it's your library, the repository for over 1,500 credentials. Army CA is where they go in and they request the funding and what you and we are a part of. And then, of course, Army Ignited is the web link that we utilize, the platform that we utilize for uh, the CA program. So the invite email, each and every one of you have been sent this e invite email before. It may have been a little while ago, so we'll be more than happy to send it back out to you. And I did see a uh, hand just pop up. Miss Juliana, do you want to come on the net? Hi. <clears throat> Hi, how are you? Doing great. How are um, you? I'm, my name is Juliana. I'm with the American College of Healthcare Executives, and we have the FACHE program 
credential. So um, thank you for explaining the difference between those three areas. Let's say, let's say that an organization gets approved through CAP. Does that automatically get on the cool site as well in the, the library repository, or or do you have to apply to both of them uh, so, separately? So that's a great question. So if if the organization that you you're with, if you actually have a credential itself meaning that you are the credentialing body for it and you don't see your credential on the Army Cool site when you do the search, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a bit, there's actually an option under contact us where you have the option to request that a credential be added. I'm going to let Miss Christine Lovin a little bit later go into depth as far as how that process goes and the length of time it can take for it to get approved and everything. But that would be done on the Army Cool site itself if you're looking to add a credential. But if you're just looking to be a vendor, uh, you go through the Army CA side to be a vendor. Soldiers will not see your business on the Army Cool site. They can only see what vendors are authorized to them on the Army CA side. So Army Cool, again, is just where all of those credentials are housed. And then the Army CA and Army Ignited, that's where they'll be able to see those credentials uh, that they're listed, as well as what vendors are offered offering that training or sitting for that exam. Does that help? Yes, thank you. You're very welcome, thank you. So, uh, all of you have received this email, and again, if you uh, it's been a while, we'll be more than happy to send it back out to you. But before we send you this email, we actually create an account for you in the system. So every one of you on the call has an account already built in Army CA. What that does for you is once you go through and you follow the steps in the email that you'll receive, you're able to resubmit your MOA back to us. You can send it to the email at the end of the slideshow. And again, all of you will get these slides as well with the video, but you can submit your MOA back and then you can go into your profile and begin your application. So this is one of the first things that you'll see from us. One of the first communications is the invite email. So again, when you get that invite email, you want to make sure that the first thing you do is you pull up that MOA, the Memorandum of Agreement. You want to make sure that you read, sign, and return it back to us. This is a mandatory requirement to be able to participate with the Army CA program. On the MOA itself, you want to make sure that on the top paragraph where it says this memorandum is an agreement between the Department of the Army and on that and you want to make sure that your vendor name is right there in that spot. And then at the bottom in the signature block, you want to make sure that the signee's name and signature are in the block, that the title of the signee, i.e. CEO, president, owner, it has to be an individual who can legally represent uh, this document on behalf of that company. The name of the vendor and the date are all listed on the signature block area. Do not use DocuSign. Our leadership cannot sign it if you use DocuSign. So just make sure if you need to, you can wet sign it and then PDF it back to us without a password attached. Return the MOA to the Army CA team and then you can begin your application in Army Ignited. Once your application's been submitted, reviewed, and approved by our, our team here, you'll receive a signed copy of your MOA back in your approval email. So we touched a little bit in the beginning about Army Cool. This is the website to be able to get to Army Cool, www.osd.cool.mil slash army. And you can see when you go in, this is what your the home page is going to look like for you. Um, again, Miss Juliana, before, uh, if you were looking to add a credential that's not listed on here, there's a little tab right here, contact us, and that'll take you directly to uh, where you need to be to request another credential. 
as far as the credentialing assistance side, here's a great tab and there's some other information we'll, we'll show you later on that, but it gives you a lot of the information like a vendor process guide, the approved vendor list, the removed and added credentials, and we update this every month. So this should be a tab that you save on your, your home screen or your favorites because it's going to become your best friend when you're looking to uh, go into this program. Why? Because the first thing we want you to do is go and select this full credential search tab. When you go onto that tab, it's going to give you the option to do a search, and we want you to type in the name of the credential that you're looking to uh, provide on your application. If the credential is there, it will populate here, and it'll show all the examples that are there. And you see right here, this one says there's 1,565 entries. I think it's a little bit higher now, uh, but that's how many credentials the system will search and it'll pull up all the ones that match the credential. You wanna make sure that on your application, that credential name, when it says the credential that you're associated with, and I'll show you that in a bit, you wanna make sure that credential name is the exact same as it is on the Army Cool website. That way when soldiers go looking for it, they can find it. I see Miss uh, Miss Susan Beyond, you have a question, ma'am? Hi, yes. Um, I just had a quick question on the previous slide of uh, sending the MOA to the team because um, I, I have it filled out. I just haven't sent it to anyone. Okay. Um, we have an email address. I think you, do you have my email address directly? I do. Okay. You can send it to me or you can send it to the email address that we'll show you at the very end of the presentation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so again, all your credentials are going to show up there and make sure that they match what's on here. So navigating Army Ignited, once you go into the site, the website there is www.armyignited.com. The best browsers that we found have been Microsoft Edge, Firefox, and Chrome. The system really doesn't work as well if you're using Safari. So just uh, try those out and see which one works best for you. You're going to click the Get Started button on the home page, and you're going to create an account in login.gov. Now, if you already have a login.gov account, say that you use it for other applications that you're a part of, do not recreate the will. You are more than welcome to utilize that same exact account. Uh, if you're a government employee, say that you work on an installation or a post or uh, even a base with one of the other services, you can use your government employee ID for your verification. If not, we want you, if you're a non-government employee, you need to select the fold option. And you'll see all of these when we get into this, this in just a little bit. And then continue following the on-screen prompts. Again, if you previously have a login.gov account, just use that one. Okay, and you can see here where it gives you the option to get started. It's going to create the account. You're going to use your email address that you want associated with your Army Ignited account. Make sure that that is a good working email address because not only is that the email address that we're going to link your vendor account to so that you'll have access to view the vendor account, it's also the email address that's going to be listed if you are the primary POC. It's going to be listed for soldiers to be able to see on the approved vendor list. So again, make sure that's a valid e and working email address for individuals to utilize. You're going to want to check your email. It's going to send you a message afterward. Make sure you're good to go. And once it's done, you're going to confirm that email address. And right here, this is where I was talking about confirming with your telephone or government employee ID if you're already in the system. Also make sure if you, uh, when you're creating your password that it is a strong password that's going to hold up in the system. Uh, and it, gi it gives you a breakdown of what's required to be for a password as you're creating it. So just make sure you follow those steps and create a password that one is strong and two, you're going to remember. going to ask you to put in your telephone number. That way it can send you a one-time code. Once you get that one-time code, you're going to enter it here, hit submit, and then hit agree and continue. 
as you'll be signing into the Army Ignited platform for the first time. Once you get in there, you have the opportunity to change your add an email address or edit your password if you need to uh, delete your account, your phone numbers, authentication apps. You can do all of that on that first sign in. And from there, you're ready to start your uh, work on your vendor account and start the application. Now, some additional resources here for you. Uh, first and foremost, we always want you to jump onto the Army Cool homepage first and look at your vendor CA process guide. It's under the credentialing assistance tab. This is all the information that I'm giving you now, and it's got a little bit extra in there as well, but this should be your first belly button. If for some reason the questions that you're you're looking for, and there's an FAQ page on there as well, that you can uh, that some of your questions may be answered on there as well. If you cannot find the answer to your questions, here's our email address right here. And again, it'll be at the end of the slideshow as well. This email address will send it directly to our box, and then we will respond back to you as uh, quickly as we get it. All right, now you're ready to go into Army Ignited. So you're going to go ahead and select Get Started. You're going to put in that email address and password that you created to hit sign in. Next thing you're going to do, it's going to tell you to request the user account. You will select that button. And it's going to bring up a screen here that says create a case as a guest user. This will take you to the ServiceNow platform, which we refer to as Snow. This is where all communications, uh, this is where we'd like for all communications to be held. That way it's tracked in. If for some reason you were to send me an email, but everyone else doesn't have it and I'm out for the day or something, at least with this, you can give us, hey, here's my case number, and anyone can look at it and help you out from there. When you are creating that account and going to Snow, the first item is you're going to make sure that your subject is new vendor request. Your case type is a roles request. The subcategory is vendor for CA program. Under section four, that's other information that's going to be pertinent, pertinent to us, i.e. the name of the institution, URL, your phone number, the name of the POC, anything that you think that would be important for us to know while setting up your account, then you're going to go ahead and hit submit. Once we've gotten that and we sent a message back to you via snow, letting you know that your account is good to go and that we've linked your account and you're ready to start, you can come into your Army Ignited application and it'll give you the option that it says start vendor onboarding. There's also great resources and everything right here underneath the welcome tab, but we ask that you continue to use the Army Cool site as we update that monthly. The site, uh, the, the links under your name may not be updated as quickly, so we would go to the Army Cool site first and you've got your how-to guides and everything there that are updated regularly. So we're going to jump into working on the vendor application. Miss Susan, do you have another question or? No, um, let me lower that. Sorry. That's OK. Just making sure. All right, so we're going to start with the actual application itself. You've submitted your MOA. We've got it. We sent it to our leadership for signature. Now you're going to start that application in the system. There's four parts to the vendor application. We're going to go over each one of them here. On part one, you're going to make sure that the vendor name, your URL, your address, city, state, zip, and country are put in, the, in there. You have to put how many years that you've been in business, and you it is mandatory to have been in business for at least two years to participate with the Army CA program. We will verify this when you keep create your cage code. Uh, we'll verify that with SAM.gov, and we'll send you the information and everything as far as creating the cage code if you don't already have that information. And then, of course, your primary vendor POC information is on there as well. You can see here what that first page is going to look like for you. Part two, 
your payment information. So that's where you're going to put in your federal tax ID, your cage code. This is not something that we provide to you. You have to go to SAM.gov and register to receive a cage code. Uh, that process may take a little bit with them. I know that uh, they're trying to get them out as quickly as possible, but just be patient with them. As soon as you get that cage code, then you can come and keep working on your application. Make sure that you've also received your cage code expiration date that you can put it in your application. There's access funding questions that are required to be answered, and then you're going to update your primary funding POC and the alternate funding POC. And here's what that looks like here. You see the little read me section. This is the required questions uh, that you have to agree to, and these questions are that you will not fund training and exams together unless the exam is free. And we'll show you why that is on your application. But on your application, it'll show on the top line your total cost of everything that you're providing. And then each item listed below that will be listed as yes, provided by the vendor, and the cost will be zero. Or if, if it's anything other than an exam, then it can be listed as no, and we'll show you there how you put all your information in there for that as well. But again, this is a required item. Also, payment is going to be made by our finance department via government credit card. You have to approve that you will accept this form of payment. Access will only make payments on behalf of the soldier. The soldier will not pay you directly. We do not send the money to the soldier to pay you. It's paid by our finance team. And then Army U requires a refund only if the, arm, if the soldier has been placed on deployment orders or for an emergency, uh, or there could be another condition that would warrant a refund. You will be notified by the finance team if this uh, occurs. No one will make a refund directly to the soldier. So if a soldier says, hey, you can just send it back to me and we'll send it back to Army CA, that's not the way it goes. Our finance team will contact you and put all that in play. You can see here also you have your primary POC for payment and alternate POC for payment. Make sure on all of your POCs you have an actual name there. Don't just put like uh, team portal box or something like that. Make sure it's actually an individual that we're corresponding with, especially on the primary vendor uh, POC on the last page. That way we know who we should be speaking to and the soldiers also know when they're looking to contact someone who they're contacting directly. So you're going to make sure your phone number, your email address, all that information in there is correct and up to date. Part three of the application. And these are another required. This is another required section uh, has questions on there that you're required to fill out. Uh, and I'll get on the one part here about their approving authorities that you have to fill it out, but it's okay if the answers are marked no. So the first item is the certificate of completion. It is a requirement to be a part of the Army CA program that you must submit a certificate of completion at the end of the soldier's training. If a soldier does not attend the training or uh, you've tried several times to contact the soldier and they're not reaching back out to you and their time has expired, this can go either one of two ways. Either one, if the soldier has enough time to complete the training, meaning that they have not exceeded one year from the start date, then you can request to the soldier that they go and submit a snow ticket for an extension. Or if the soldier has exceeded that one year and still has not participated and done what they were supposed to do, you will submit a certificate of non-completion, basically stating that the soldier did not show up, give us any communication that you had with the soldier. That way it goes into the soldier's record and then we will request a recoupment from the soldier, not you. The vendor URL and files uploaded for all courses required for the service member. Again, any URL or files that you see listed, make sure that you're going to go in there and fill all of those out. Don't leave anything blank. And you'll also have information in there as far as for not only your, your syllabuses, if you have those to upload, but also for those individuals who have completed the exam portion, even if you only offer training, you need to reach back out to those soldiers or even civilian individuals and request the exam completion information. Now, here's a caveat to that. 
If you are the credentialing body itself or you are an approved training provider, say you have an agreement between you and Microsoft or CompTIA to be able to provide the training, you can submit that letter underneath this section and that will suffice as well. And then, of course, if you have stats on students that have been hired after completing your course, we'd like that information uploaded as well. And this all goes back to when when Congress or OSD steps up and they ask, how are these programs doing or how does this vendor weigh against this vendor or how many individuals are, have actually passed? We can provide these statistics. Look, our vendors provide these statistics. Here it is in real time. And again, you can see here, uh, will a certificate of completion or proof be provided at the end of the course? It says a required item. This is the section I was telling you about that it has to be filled out, but it's okay if it says no. So if you're not a part of the Department of Veteran Affairs or Department of Labor or Education, that's okay. You can mark these as no. Just make sure that they're all filled out. If you are a part of it, then definitely mark it as yes. Again, that helps us with justifying the OSD. And we, are, we have individuals who are part of these other vendors as well, these other agencies as well, excuse me. There's those URL and upload file locations that I was telling you about. Anytime you see a URL, put your URL in there, or if it's to another part of your site, let's say you actually list on your website where you show the statistics for individuals who have passed, have gone on to get hired, you can put that URL here, and then here's where you can upload those files that we were talking about. Here's an example of the credential pass verification. If you're not an approved training provider or a credentialing body, you can use this format. And again, we'll send this out to everybody. You're not required to use this format. As long as the key things that you hit on there are the name of the credential, the month or year say that you took a survey between 2000 20 to 2022 of how many individuals have passed or failed and then your past percentage and the numbers enrolled. So those are the key things that we will need. Again, you can use this format. We can send it out to you. Or if you have your own, you're more, more than welcome to use that as long as it meets those minimal items. Part four. So there's two sections to part four. This is where you're going to input your information on the application. But on part one, you're going to identify if it's a training or an exam. You're going to identify the training or exam name. You're going to make sure that it's listed as an associated credential name. Remember, I was talking about making sure that that credential is on Army Cool. Spell it out exactly the way on your application as you see it on Army Cool. If it's online or in person or a hybrid between the two, the location, if it's in person, and then, of course, you can provide your training agenda and syllabus here as well. Here's an example of what that looks like. Once you've got through part one, then you're going to go over to part two of uh, part four. And this is where you're going to put in the cost type, the item name, the item provided by a vendor, you're going to put in the uh, ISBN number if it's required, the cost, the quantity, and the URL. Remember, an exam and training cannot be put together unless the exam is listed as $0.00. And zero cents. So make sure that if you're going to bundle it together, you list that exam as $0.00. And zero cents. Next couple of slides are going to be examples of how your information can look once you put it in there. So this is just for an exam by itself. And remember, you have a fee or a book or anything that, like that has to be tied to either an exam or a training. It can't sit out there by itself. So here's an example of an exam. This is for the Senior Human Resources Manager Certified Professional. You see here that it's an exam. Yes, it's provided by the vendor. The cost right here. And then, of course, there's a block down here to be able to put the URL. Here's an example of when you're starting a bundle. So 
this is the training. This is the total cost of everything, $250 right there. And it includes an exam voucher in it. And that, uh, that voucher is listed as $0.00. And zero cents. And you also want to make sure that when you're doing your application, your price quote or your invoice, as some people call it, it matches because you're going to have to provide that to the soldier when they first contact you before they can start their CA request. So you want that invoice or that price quote to exactly match what you, the, how you have it on Army CA. So the price quote would say $250 on the top line, and then below that you would show exam, $0.00, and, zero cents, and then in the total line at the very bottom, it would be $250. Here's an example of an item that's not provided by the vendor. So you, again, you have your total price here, but say it's a book that the member has to go and get on Amazon or somewhere like that. You would make sure you list this as no. You would put the ISBN number. You would put the cost, the quantity, the name, obviously. And then below here, there's also a URL link as well. There's an example CDL application. The total cost is $4,000. There's a book with it, $0.00. The application fee here, this is for the physical and for the drug test. Both of them listed as $0.00. If you offer flight training, uh, a lot of times we've had issues where vendors have put the FAA check right on there. It is an exam, so it has to be listed as an exam. And if you're going to put it onto your application, make sure it says zero dollars and zero cents. A good note is if you do not offer the exam physically at your location or you do not offer a voucher for the exam, don't put it on your application. That makes it so much easier for you. Here's an example of an airframe and power plant that we actually just had earlier uh, last week. And you can see here, you'll put your total price here, and then you're breaking down everything that's within that, that airframe and power plant training. Remember, you can only offer one exam voucher per training bundle. So like with this one, with the AMP, you have the, uh, there's actually the airframe, the general airframe power plant and oral and practical exams. With this one, you would have it listed as, they have an FAA AMP mechanic. So this is both together, but on here you would only be able to offer the FAA uh, power plant exam because the general is going to come with it automatically, whether you do it for the power plant side or the airframe side. But just make sure you only put one exam voucher on here per bundle. If there's other exams that they would need to go through, you can list those separately and actually put the price with those items, but do not list it all under one, one bundle. Some important takeaways from part four, it's probably the most difficult section that we see with our vendors and usually what causes an application to get uh, rejected and sent back. It's okay, again, to bundle those training and exams as long as the exam is listed as zero dollars and zero cents. And a key thing that I forgot to put on here with the application, if you're noticing that when you put in your numbers, your cost, and it automatically reverts to like, say it was supposed to be $2,000, and then it reverts to $2, make sure that you take away the dollar symbol and then just put in 2000 and it'll save. Yes, ma'am. I see Ms. Juliana, you have your hand up. I, <clears throat> thank you for recognizing me. I do have, have my hand up again. So um, I think I'm understanding this not this bundling thing. And, and, and honestly, the American College of Healthcare Executives uh, doesn't really have an exam training bundle. Everything is purchased a la carte, right? So, okay. um, so for example, we would have there's one fee for an application fee. There's another exam fee. And then there's the review material, books, courses, flashcards, you know, but everything, everything is a la carte on that side. How would we have to just have like, I don't know, four or five different applications for each of those offerings? 
No. So if you're going to list everything separately, you can put it all on one application separately. But just realize if a soldier's going through and they say, OK, I need this training and I need this book and I need this exam voucher, um, then they're going to have to request three different CA requests versus if they have it under a bundle, all of that is under the bundle, then everything is paid for up front to you as the the vendor. And then okay. you could dish it up and say, okay, the soldier requested this book and mm -hmm. this exam voucher, and it's already paid in the total that was sent to you. Sure. Yeah, I understand. You know, as the saying goes, everything in life is 50-50, right? Right. <laughs> this is it's either easier for the vendor to submit to, to get the application in or making it easier for the soldier to submit for reimbursement or, or expenses paid. Right. Okay, that helps me. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, yeah. Sophia, but that you? Sorry, I was just going to add that, you know, even if there are soldiers who want to pick and choose, just like you said, there's a la carte, they can submit custom requests specific to just what they're looking for. Um, so, you know, if, if that's a better way to do it, if you listed everything individually or you bundled some things, you could absolutely do that. But the other option is the soldier can request specific items on their own. OK, thank you for that extra help. Yeah, no problem. You're yeah. very welcome. You have another uh, hand. Um, I met Shorwala. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So uh, I just, uh, you know, I try to uh, do everything what you explained last year. And, you know, for some reason it would was kept being denied. I did exactly what you have explained till now. And I see, like, I emailed, like, you know, everybody who I could, who's uh, who were providing me assistance, you know, and uh, nobody was able to resolve why we were not getting approved or explain to me what I was doing wrong. And finally, I just gave up. So, you know, <laughs> I, I have the application on my other computer, and I was checking as you were explaining to me, I've done exactly the same thing. The courses are uploaded, the cost is there, everything is there. I really want to know what is it that I'm doing wrong. Gotcha. So here's what we can do for you uh, in the interest of the meeting today. Uh, do you have my email address directly, Mrs. Shorwala? Uh, I think I have it, but you can provide it to me. I would be more than happy to take it down again. OK, so my email directly is Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L -S -S -E dot M as in Mike dot gray g r a y dot c i v at army dot mil send me an email and what we'll do is we'll schedule a microsoft teams meeting just for you and that way we can walk through your application step by step and we can make sure you're taken care of excellent okay yeah i actually had written to you also like you know like almost mm -hmm. about like on march 5th and you you did send me a lot of information, but I just think that I'm doing something wrong, you know, and I would really, really be um, like, um, I, I would be like very thankful if we can just like do a Zoom meet and, you know, get it out of the way. Definitely understood. We can get that set up for you and we'll uh, we'll get you taken care of. Thank you so much. Is, yeah. is your email address, I'm sorry, one last thing, at the rate mail.mil or army.mil? Army.mil. OK, OK, get you. Thank you. You're and, welcome. Uh, Russell, this is Juliana again. <laughs> Sorry to um, keep chiming in, but I had the same experience as Mr. Shawala. Um, ACHE submitted an application, I think, in 2019 and kept going back and forth about it was denied, requesting more information. We never really understood why it was denied and you know, what information was being requested. There, it was very difficult to get answers and at least somebody to even talk to us. I don't think we ever got anybody to even talk to us. Um, everything was done by email. Nobody would pick up a phone and just call and try and figure things out with us. 
So it was very frustrating on, on the vendor side. So obviously we gave up. Gotcha. Well, the last thing we want you guys to do is to give up on us. And just so you know, the Army CA program took effect in 2020. So that may have been on the Go Army Ed side. And there were other things that we're still trying to figure out. But definitely make sure that you send me an email as well. Um, and we'll set up a time for you and we'll walk through your application and everything step by step to make sure that you're good to go as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. All right. Also on the part four takeaways. Again, if you don't offer an exam, just make sure that you don't put it on your application. It's it's much easier that way and your application is more likely to get approved than not to be disapproved for having an exam that you do not offer. Remember, our service members are only allotted $4,000 per fiscal year, and that's tied between their credentialing assistance and their tuition assistance. So if you have a training that you offer, say that it's uh, for flight training and it's $10,000, uh, and I'm just throwing a number out there, but say it's $10,000 and that soldier only gets $4,000, and if they're active duty for flight training, they only get $1,000 per fiscal year. So we ask that our vendors phase out that training so, uh, so they can go back and request it again because we're only going to be able to request that name one time. So if you have it as private pilot's license and it's $15,000. That soldier's only going to be able to request that one time and then only get $1,000 toward, toward it, and then they're going to be on the hook for the rest. Whereas if you phase it out and you say private pilot phase one, private pilot phase two, et cetera, that soldier can come back with the change of the fiscal year and request those funds to keep doing their training. So that's just something to consider when you're doing your training if it's a high dollar amount. Okay, so this is an example of the certificate of completion. Uh, I see I just had a few hands to jump up there. Uh, Miss Diana? Yes. Uh, thank you. So you're talking about, so I am out of flight school. You're talking about the phases. If we've already submitted the application just under private pilot, is there a way to um, resubmit? I literally just did this yesterday. Um, so Absolutely. I was aware that we could phase this out. Absolutely. So what you can do, um, what I would do, what's the name of your uh, vendor account? Uh, Cornerstone Aviation. Okay. When I go into the system after this call, I'll go ahead and disapprove that one for you okay. and send it back to you. That way you can uh, you can edit it. Easy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Ms. Juliana, did you have something else as well? No, I don't. Okay. I lower my hand. <laughs> no problem. All right. So this is an example of the certificate of completion we were talking about. And again, this is a template that we can offer you to utilize. But if you have your own version of a certificate of completion, you're more than welcome to utilize it. Just make sure that it shows the soldier's name, what course they were pursuing, the start and end date of that course, the vendor name, if they pass or failed that course and on what date the signature of the person signing for it that uh, certificate and the date that it was issued so make sure that information is on there if you're using a different one but if you want to use ours we're more than welcome to send it out to you and it will actually be attached to the email that we send out that has the youtube links and everything for the for this training So keeping up with your application, we review all of your applications annually. We'll go through every part of your application. Here's where we need your help with the application. When it's time for the annual review, we need you to go in and we'll let you know plenty of time in advance that the annual review is coming. But we need you to go into your applications and physically look to make sure that your cage code, the expiration for your cage code, your PLC information, your URLs are still valid, 
your training items are up to date with correct prices and as well as your costs. That's the biggest things that we're looking for when you do your annual review. There is no wait time if you update your information during the annual review. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're waiting till after the annual review and you say, hey, we need to increase the prices on two of our trainings. OK, you can go in and do that after you let us know that you're going to make that update. You can do that, but note that the anything that you increase the price of cannot show up on a soldier's itemized price quote for at least 90 days. So what we tell you to do in that situation is if you know that something's going to be changing in 90 days, you can go ahead and put it on your application, but then you put a note out beside it saying effective such date. That way soldiers know, hey, this isn't the one I can pick for right now. This is the one that's authorized. And then once that 90 days hit, you can go back in your application and you can remove the other items. If you are decreasing your price or you're adding additional items that weren't previously on the application, there is no wait time for those. Again, just send us an email, let us know that you're decreasing or adding an item, and we'll tell you you're good to go. Go forward and update your application, and then all you got to do is go through and update that. Costs on applications are expected to match the prices on those price quotes. So again, if it says $2,500 and then everything else is listed as zero on your application in Army Ignited, then on the price quote, it should say $2,500 and everything else listed as zero on the, on the price quote. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to our program manager, Mrs. Sophia Sweeney, to give you some updates about the program. And then before we wrap it up, I'm also going to give you guys the opportunity to hear from Miss Christine Loving with Solid, who helps run the Army Cool platform itself. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sophia Sweeney. Thank you, Russell. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's session. Um, just want to go over a few things that uh, we've seen and uh, offer some some suggestions. So marketing materials. Uh, there is a standard on what you can and can't post about the credentialing assistance program. Um, one of the biggest things that that uh, or issues we have is the you know the mix up with the Army Cool Army credentialing assistance. And so, um, you know, we recommend that if once you are ready to post something on your website or you know change some things on your website, please just let us know so we can review it prior to it going live. Um, because if there's mistakes on it or um, you know verbiage that is not correct, uh, we'll ask that you take it down and, and fix it. Um, so it's, it's easier if you just uh, have us look at that as soon as possible. That way um, you won't have to worry about any corrections. Um, so there's that. And as far as any marketing materials that go to education centers, that kind of thing, so that, you know, uh, you want to market your programs, you can absolutely do that. But it does have to go through uh, the ESOs or education services officers on any installation, right? And you can request that they do that. And um, if they post things for colleges and universities, they will also equally um, post your information out there as well. The next topic is installation access. So uh, there are times when, you know, vendors want to go on to an installation to discuss their programs with soldiers. Um, you can't just go on to an installation without requesting approval, right? And again, um, only those that are approved in Army Ignited as a CA vendor are authorized to request installation access. Um, so that is, again, that would go through the ServiceNow system or SNOW. Um, you'd request to go to a specific um, location to market your, your programs if that is uh, something you want to do. But, um, you know, try, there are, th we've had issues where some vendors would try to get onto an installation and try to teach a course, but um, that violates the installation policies that are in place as well as the MOA that we have everyone sign for the CA program. Aggressive tactics, um, we've also seen this as well, and this is very much a big uh, issue if uh, this happens, right? 
so part of the MOA is letting you know that you cannot, you know, be aggressive with trying to gather, um, you know, people to participate in your programs, right? So the rule is three. You know, if you call more than three times, then it is considered aggressive. OK, so um, just know that this stuff is in the, the MOA, but we still have people that violate or vendors that violate this policy. Um, if we find that you violate ty that type of thing, then again, we will notify you um, formally and uh, first give you your warning. And then, you know, we hope to never have to give you a warning, but I, I put it out there because it does happen. And um, the CA policy is currently under revision and it's being reviewed by our legal team. But to find the current CA policy, um, Russell already talked about uh, the CA page, the credentialing assistance page on Army Cool. So we always recommend that you go to Army Cool because that's where it's going to have all of the up to date information on the CA program, as well as other offerings on, you know, that go on in Army Cool. So please go there. You can find, um, you know, the steps for what you offer or for how you can become a vendor. Also, the steps that the soldiers take to submit their CA requests so that you can see what they see on their end. Right. So you can download those. You can look at all of that. Uh, and again, the new policy, once it is clear to go and be published, um, it will be posted there in Army Cool. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was your queue, right? Uh, so everyone gets, and this is, we get these questions a lot from vendors about, you know, oh, how long does it take? I've, I've issued out all these quotes, right? Because we ask that you give soldiers um, custom quotes. So they'll ask, you know, hey, what's taking so long? You know, I gave this out like a month ago or two months ago. I still haven't seen anything. Um, so one, we can't discuss anything that is not in your current queue. Once you have your account, you will be able to see all of the soldiers that um, we've processed and moved over to finance for payment. So once they, um, once it gets to you, you'll be able to see it. There is a shortage on our team where we're, um, we still have to get another person, or hire another person on, um, on our team and then also the finance team. So that kind of pushes things and makes things slower when we're processing cases, right? So we have, this is why we ask for 30 business days in advance from the start date, 30 business days, meaning no weekends, no holidays. So we process these cases, um, but it can take up to a few days prior to the start date for you to see them in your queue, right? And it can take up to the day of the start date for finance to make this, this payment. So if you have like hard start dates, um, we understand it's going to be you're going to be a little antsy about it. But the, but we do ask that you remain patient because if they do show up in your queue, um, unless there's some type of issue, the soldier right before we make the payment, there's an issue where the soldier gets flagged or something, you know, we will make those payments, right? Um, rarely do we not make a payment that has been sent to um, finance for payment, but it does happen. So we ask that you be patient during that time. Uh, when it does come to funding, if a vendor uh, or once the finance team is going to make a payment, they contact the vendors via email um, and uh, phone number, right? It could be either one or both, but it's very important that because they're going to call the finance POCs that you list in your application. It's very important that those are the absolute correct people to, for them to talk to, right? Because again, like I said, we're, you know, we're making all these payments on time, but if we, if there's something that causes a delay to where they can't call and make that payment right away, <coughs> excuse me, they will um, reject that soldier. So, if you ever have any changes that need to be made, please make them right away and just let us know, hey, I had to update my application or, you know, we had to change the POC for finance. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll push that one through, no issues. But I think that is about it. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand. And I will go ahead and turn it back over to Russell so you can turn it over to Christine. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Sophia. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I want to introduce you to Miss Christine Loving. She's with our our team uh, working with Solid uh, Solution for Information Design. So uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Christine Loving. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I am the lead on the Army Cool side of this program. And we maintain the website for Army Cool and um, process everything through there. Um, we mentioned the contact button. If you do uh, submit an Army Cool contact through that, uh, I'm one of the people that receives that and I answer the majority of them. So if you get an email back, it might probably will be from me. Um, so the only thing I really wanted to cover is a little bit of discussion about how a credential gets added to Cool. Um, the back when um, when the credentialing assistant or the well the credentialing programs for the services were created through um, US Code 10 in 2015, and then it was amended by NDAA FY 2017. It is a requirement that the credentials meet certain standards, and so DoD created the DoD Cool standards that all credentials listed on Army Cool and any of the Cool sites must adhere to. Um, so when a credential is submitted by a soldier, a vendor, um, you know, we, we know from the agency they've issued new ones. Uh, we get other reports from other sources that identify new credentials. We do a preliminary review. We look to see if it is truly a certification or if it's a certificate program or a course. Uh, Army Cool does not include certificate programs or courses. So a certificate program would typically be something where you are offering training and then assessing the student at the end of that training. That is different from a certification, which requires a job task analysis. So those are two different things. And when that is submitted for review, and we do that cursory review, if it is in fact uh, appear to be a certification, we initiate a DOD cool standards form and that goes straight to the agency and they're given 60 to 90 days to return that form. Um, once they return the form back to us, um, all of their data and supporting information is reviewed. And then a recommendation is made to the services regarding whether or not they, we recommend that they um, include this on the websites, but it is ultimately up to the services to make that decision on whether it in fact does meet the criteria. This process can be lengthy. To start, we already give them two to three months to respond, and that it can take another few months, uh, sometimes longer for the review, depending on how much information is submitted, if there's a lot of back and forth with follow-up questions and those sorts of things. So just be aware that if you do have a new credential you want to recommend and it needs to go through this process, it's not gonna be an overnight thing and it's going to take some time to get it by, like fully approved. Um, the process is managed by DOD, not the Army. So it is one process for all of the cool websites. If you are approved through a request through Army Cool, uh, you will be approved for all of the sites. However, it has to map to a military occupation in those services. So if your credential doesn't apply to say Coast Guard, then you won't be listed on the Coast Guard site. So just some information about how that works. Um, if you do have any questions about anything on the Army Cool website, please feel free to submit an Army Cool contact and we can help straighten it out. Uh, if, if it's something we can't answer, it's outside of our scope, it's more a credentialing assistance question, we'll send you back over to the credentialing assistance team and ask you to contact them directly. Uh, we don't have any access, excuse me, to Army Ignited. Uh, so I can't check anyone's status of anything, soldiers included. So unfortunately, those have to either go through the snow ticketing system or uh, directly to the credentialing assistance team. Um, and I think that's everything that I wanted to cover, but I am happy to answer any questions if anyone has them. Thank you. And thank you, Christine. And uh, again, all this information will be made available to each and every one of you as a part of not only a YouTube 
uh, link from not only this morning's training, but from this training, as well as a copy of the slides and the forms and everything else. So we're going to make sure that we get that out to each and every one of you. So let's have a recap here. We went over uh, knowing the difference, the invite email that you'll receive, your memorandum of agreement, finding your credentials on Army Cool, creating an account, creating your application, the certificate of completion template, the credentialing management tab that you can, that Sophia talked to you about, where you can see the soldiers that have been pushed over to finance for payment, keeping up with your application, and finally our program manager updates. Here are some great links that you're going to have access to to be able to find information, such as submitting snow tickets, uh, looking at the Army Cool webpage, looking at the CA section on the Army Cool webpage, guidelines on DOD logos, installation access, and of course your cage code information. All of this will be in the, the slides that we send to you. But before we close this up today, are there any questions from the field? There's one question, and this is, well, actually two. We'll be sharing the slide deck. There were a lot of you, uh, lots of URLs and good details about filling out the application that I missed in my note taking. Absolutely. We will be sending these slides out with the videos uh, to make sure everybody has it. I will tell you, uh, it may take a little bit longer. It may be early next week before everybody gets in every, everything. We're trying to get some issues fixed with my email box, but we will make sure that each and every one of you get this information. Then the last one was from, oh gosh, I don't want to mess up the name, Delena. Um, can I send an email after this class to ask more questions? And yeah, absolutely. But if you have a mic, you can ask here if you'd like. Okay, she doesn't have a mic. Okay, um, well, I, I added the email uh, address up there. You can absolutely send your questions, um, and then we can we can uh, address them. No problem. Any other questions from the field today? Well, you guys have made this easy. Thank each and every one of you so much for participating with us today. Uh, we we love that each and every one of you uh, took the call and jumped out there with us to be a part of this. And so where, where do we go from here? The next step is having each and every one of you become an approved vendor on the Army CA side so that we continue to add more resources to all of our soldiers. So thank each and every one of you for your consideration today, and we look forward to being partnered with you very soon. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video.